that Constantinos Danny Philippidis, the focus of an intense rescue at Whiteface, has now turned up in California. He's a Toronto firefighter who contacted authorities today in Sacramento, California. NBC5's Leanne Denyer has been talking with state police and Leanne joins us live in Wilmington with late breaking information. Leanne, what happened? There's a lot that we still don't know tonight, but like you said, New York State Police has confirmed that Constantinos Danny Philippidis is alive and well. Police say that he made contact with law enforcement in California, but tonight we have no idea what prompted this man to leave his group of skiers and travel thousands of miles across the country while crews spent nearly a week here at Whiteface Mountain searching for him. 49-year-old firefighter was reported missing last Wednesday. State forest rangers, volunteers, even some of his fellow firefighters from Toronto have been combing this mountain for any sign of him. The steep and icy terrain making this a challenging task. We spoke with New York State Police yesterday about the search efforts. Troop B Commander John Tibbetts told us that while there was a heavy focus on the mountain itself, investigators were also trying to figure out if there could be any other possible reason for his disappearance. We also have an investigative unit that is involved in any missing persons case. Uh, you know, and they've been uh, on the scene and uh, very involved since probably the second day. Again, that was the word yesterday ahead of us learning that he is alive and well. Until today, though, police said there was no indication that Philippidis was not on the mountain. But as you heard, state police had been open to the idea since early on. Officials estimate they've spent nearly 7,000 hours combing this treacherous mountain looking for him. But again, he has been located in California. There are many details that we still do not know just yet. Police do expect to release some more information tomorrow. But for now, live at Whiteface, Leon Denyer, NBC5 News. Leanne, thank you. We continue our coverage of this story. We're going to go live to Toronto right now where there's a news conference underway. Philippidis is a captain in the fire department there. Let's take a listen in. Apparently he was uh, confused. He wasn't uh, able to give uh, uh, direct answers. Uh, they were the police that eventually made contact with him were concerned and brought him to uh, get some medical attention. And is he still in hospital or is he in custody? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I believe he's still under uh, uh, medical uh, uh, monitoring. Can you tell us how he made contact with his wife? He had phoned. Um, he had uh, called her by a nickname. She quickly recognized the voice and that it was him. Uh, then they lost contact. He contacted her again and uh, they kept him on the phone and asked him to call 911 to get him help as soon as possible. Where was he at that point? I know it's uh, somewhere near Sacramento, California. Do you know like what kind of place he was in that he was found in? Uh, I don't have information to that. Was he with anybody at the time? He was alone. Does he have a history of mental illness? I'm not aware of any history of mental illness. Was there any signs of trauma? Do you know if he's being treated for any other conditions at this time? Um, I, I'm, I'm told that he still had the same clothing that he was skiing in, and uh, the authorities seem to indicate that it looked like uh, he had been in those clothes for since he's been missing. So for five and a half days at this point? Uh, can you tell us how many of your firefighters traveled up to Lake Placid? I understand that you issued um, a call for help on the weekend and you asked for people to travel down. How many went and how many of your officers have been searching? We had a tremendous uh, uh, amount of uh, response. We had, uh, I, I believe, about 100 firefighters. I know that there were 80 on the mountain today searching for them. And we had an equal number of firefighters uh, uh, willing to work shift for the firefighters that went. I think that's an extremely important part is I am so proud of our members, how they came together. No matter what the investigation unfolds, I think you cannot take away that you know, all the volunteer and all the work uh, that was put into finding Danny, that's uh, the co-workers, some that knew him really well and some that didn't know him at all, uh, understood that uh, one of us were in trouble and they went. We use the term brother and sister, and I'm glad that they're not just words. Uh, the actions of uh, this past week uh, really showed me that we are a uh, family. Who was with him initially, and how did they lose him? 
Uh, there was, uh, it's an annual ski trip. Uh, there was, I believe, about eight of them skiing. He had been skiing with someone who was feeling fatigued. Uh, the person he was skiing with wanted to take a break. It was coming to uh, the end of the day and Danny, uh, Danny uh, wanted to do a, a last run. So he was skiing by himself when he went missing. And you know Danny personally. What's uh, your reaction just to having a, a friend and a colleague, not only back home, but, but alive? Because a week is a long time to be out in freezing temperatures. I think some people were even thinking the worst. You know, I'm, I'm so happy for him, I'm happy for his family, and I'm happy for his co-workers. I actually went to Lake Placid on Thursday. I was there till late Sunday. I looked, uh, I spoke to his wife, I spoke to his son uh, to see the pain in their eyes. Uh, I'm glad that they have their dad back. And also, I quite honestly didn't know what I was going to do with the seven or eight members when they came back and the guilt that they were feeling. So I'm happy that... Uh, uh, that the situation turned out positive for Danny and that uh, hopefully now uh, there's closure and they won't have that guilt because you know we were quite concerned I've had discussions with uh, some of our uh, peer support people on exactly what we could do for our members that were skiing with them you can imagine the guilt that they would have if this turned out to be a tragic event. Is there any idea as to how he ended up from New York to Sacramento, California? Uh, that's under investigation. He wasn't able to give those answers. Um, that is something that, uh, as the police do their investigation, we'll find out. Do you know what day he California arrived? He California with his ski equipment on. Uh, apparently, he had his, uh, still his heavy jacket, his ski pants were on, um, and I'm told his helmet and goggles were with him as well. What kind of state was he in when it, he decided to go for that one last run? Was he, did he seem mentally and physically well at that point? Uh, there were no indication of any problems. As I said, the person who was skiing with him was feeling fatigued. He wanted to take a rest. He didn't want to ski anymore. That ski hill closes at 4. I'm told this was around 2.30. And uh, Danny stated he just wanted to finish one more run. They were coming home that night. You said there will be no doubt speculations and questions around this sudden appearance. What have you heard in terms of speculations? Well, obviously, uh, how, how you end up uh, from uh, uh, New York State in California, and people are going to assume what they assume. Uh, but I think uh, we have authorities now in California. We have authorities in uh, New York State. They'll do a full search. Um, there were a lot of resources that New York State put into the search, and they're going to want to uh, make sure that, it, that nothing here was done maliciously, as they should. And uh, they'll do a comprehensive uh, uh, investigation. If anything was done maliciously, who's going to be bearing the brunt of the costs for the search? This is a massive search. There were 140 people at the Department of Homeland Security, etc. I'm not familiar with New York State or what their laws are, but I'm sure at the, if, if, if that was the case, that they will deal with it as they choose to. Sometimes the people go on these kinds of ski trips and vacations, they partake in alcohol and substances. Can you speak to the sort of the culture that goes on at some of these ski trips? Um, I don't go on too many ski trips, so I don't know. Uh, well, these, these, are uh, these, are, these are firefighters that go on ski trips together. I know really the police did a comprehensive uh, investigation with everyone that had seen uh, Danny that was with them, and all indications were that there was no substance abuse, that he was uh, uh, perfectly fine uh, when they left them. Do we know what day he arrived in California? Uh, they don't know. They know that today was the first day he was able to make uh, contact. At what time did he make contact? Uh, I believe uh, rough, shortly after noon. Our time or their time? Uh, the New York time and our time uh, would be the same. Oh, because I was told that the search was cut, called off around 145? Uh, they, uh, I, I got contacted uh, just shortly before the search was called off, uh, and they were still making sure that it was him. Obviously, they wanted to make sure it wasn't a hoax, and they were trying to get his identity. So he hasn't indicated if he was driven to California, if he flew to California, that we have no idea exactly how he ended up on the other side of the USA? Uh, I'm told that it's unlikely that he flew to California as he had no ID on him, and I know the police were in possession of his passport and identification. So. Um, I, I don't think he would have been able to fly uh, 